Hello everybody, this is Tim again, here with my review for Friday the 13th Part 3, or Friday the 13th 3D. <laughs> so I'd jerk out my deluxe edition copy of this fucker here. Sorry about that. There we go. Ooh, 3D. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's coming at you. <laughs> but anyway, 3D is a, is a gimmick thing that especially a lot of 80 movies used, and nowadays it's used like every fucking week a new movie comes out. Uh, meet Jason in a whole new dimension. <laughs> this would be really cool. A, thri a Friday the 13th film in 3D is really awesome, and I wish I could have seen this in th theaters back in the day in 3D. But, uh, of course, now you have to have a really good 3D home playing system, I'd say, to watch this in really good high-quality 3D. And Mine's only average, so it doesn't come out as good as it should, but uh, it would be awesome to see this in original 3D. Uh, the film is once again directed by Steve Miner, who also directed the second film. Uh, Steve Miner, he does good here, once again, directing-wise. He did good with the second one, too, I felt. Uh, I think he does a little bit better directing-wise with this one, but I think the, the second film altogether was a better film than this one. I would give this film a two and a half stars out of a possible four. A little bit less than the second film, because my main gripe with this one, that made me drop it down. Even if I gave it three stars, it'd still not be as good as the second one to me. But uh, the reason I gave it two and a half instead of a possible three that I was going to give it is because the ending just makes no fucking sense. But I'll get into that. Okay, so film stars Dana Kimmel and Paul Krotka, I think is how you say his name, and Richard Brooker as Jason. Uh, Richard Brooker does a good job as Jason. I like this version of Jason. I enjoy it. It's not my favorite version of Jason. Uh, the Kane Hodder one uh is my favorite version of jason but uh the richard brooker one in this one is pretty good i like the one from part four better but this one right here would definitely be in my top four uh music by harry manfredini um harry manfredini his score for the first film i enjoyed his score for the second film i enjoyed his score for this one is almost like a fucking disco pop theme <laughs> that just screams 80s and, <laughs> and i love it i love it i love it the opening credits for this one, it's like, it picks up directly after the ending of the second film, even has the ending of the second film at the beginning of it, uh, which is cool. <laughs> and, then all, and then it just focuses in on Mrs. Voorhees' head, and the fucking Friday 13th Part 3, like, the words pop up, and then the, the words, like, go straight towards the screen, extend like that in 3D with that disco Friday 13th style theme playing, and I love it. I love that credit. It's not as good, not as good as, uh, in my opinion, as the opening credits from the first and second film, but I still really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it, and it really fits this film good. Let's take a look at the 3D glasses here. Okay. 3D glasses I really like. I like the way they're made. You get two pairs. Looks like little hockey masks, which is cool. And for anybody wondering about the back, it says Fire 13 3D on it. That's really cool. I really do like the 3D idea, and I think it's really cool. Cause this film, I had a really good 3D system, and this film, I'm not sure how this film looks on a really good high-tech 3D system, but if it looks really good, then it, I probably would like this one inadvertently more than the second one, just because the 3D is cool to look at. But, uh, to jump right into the film, picks up after the second movie again, continuity. I love that. I, I like that. I'm a big stickler for continuity, <laughs> so I enjoy that. So that's cool. It picks up directly after the second film. Um, the police are like searching for Jason's body. He makes it to this couple's place at the beginning of it who run in the supermarket. He fucking kills one guy who's like taking a shit, hacks him in the chest with a cleaver, and then the other woman he grabs from behind with a mouth with his hand over her mouth and stabs her in the back of the head with a knit needle, I believe. So that was pretty cool. Those were cool deaths. One bad thing about this movie is that it's got a lot of annoying 3D shots. This is old fashioned 3D where they inject stuff towards the camera and it looks fucking stupid sometimes uh that that i can't i don't like <laughs> they got a scene where like there's a rattlesnake that jumps directly out towards the screen at the at the character harold at the beginning of the movie uh, and it jumps directly towards him like that and you can see that's like a being pulled on a wire and they're trying to pull it towards the screen and it just looks stupid um other stuff uh they got a scene with a yo-yo that's like being like put directly towards the screen and it's pulled up and down and it's going like directly towards the camera like that and it just looks fucking stupid uh, other than that, no, other than annoying 3D shots and one character resurrection at the end and one dumb ending, then, uh, this film's still pretty decent. 
uh, character-wise, you have a character named Chris in this one. She's the lead. She had to run in with Jason when she was younger, which I'll talk about. Which that was, she's pretty neat how she has a real connection to Jason. Um, you got her, uh, her boyfriend, uh, Rick. He he's kind of seems like an older guy for these types of movies. I don't know. He just seems like well, maybe like the actor. I don't know. He just has an older look to him. I just it's weird for me to picture him being this girl's boyfriend, but that's just me. Whatever. <laughs> Then you got these two stoners. One's named Chuck. Another one's named Chili. But I'm just gonna call him Chong because he looks like fucking Chong from Cheech and Chong, which I don't have a problem with. I like Cheech and Chong. This guy's funny. Uh, but uh, they seem old, too old too to be hanging out with like high school kids or whatever. But anyway, uh, so and then you get this character named Debbie, and she's she's pregnant. We get a pregnant woman in Friday the 13th. That's interesting. Uh, she has a boyfriend named Andy. He does a lot of handstands and likes to walk on his hands. That's fun. Get another practical joker in here named Shelly. Uh, Shelly, uh, he's alright. I like this character better than the practical joker from the second film who was just a complete copy of the guy from the first one. This guy has more to his character. He's like, he does practical jokes all the time just because he considers himself just such a loser that nobody cares about him. So he has to do this shit for people to acknowledge his existence. So that's kind of an interesting character. Like, I mean, that's kind of an interesting character for this film, and I enjoy that. He's much better than, the, than Ted from the second film, and at least he dies, so I enjoy that. <laughs> also, you get the hockey mask in this film. Uh, the hockey mask is more iconic, and I like the hockey mask better than the pillow sack or sack or whatever. Uh, but it's not as creepy. And once Jason gets it, it's, uh, the film kind of loses a little bit of its uh, creep factor. But it becomes more fun, so fuck it. It's a trade off. <laughs> uh, so, jump back into the film here. Jason kills the two people at the beginning who are working at the grocery store. He steals some of Harold's clothes, so Jason gets some new clothes and, and some new duds in this one. <laughs> so, Jason then makes his way to a place called Higgins Haven, I believe is what it's called. Uh, it's like a farm. There's a barn there, and Jason spends most of his time like hiding out in the fucking barn, like watching people and then stalking and killing them when. At least expect it, which is cool. Uh, uh, then you get well, you got this other character named Vera, who is like, uh, well, she's just uh, she's Shelly's date. Basically, they set Shelly up with her, and uh, she seems kind of disappointed. <laughs> and uh, uh, but 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 anyway, uh, after the, well, after the two are killed at the beginning of the film, you get a really stupid 3D shot. Of this little kid's like holding the fucking ball bat towards the camera and it looks fucking stupid and more annoying 3d shots i don't like you get a funny scene in the movie where after they all make it to higgins haven they're all well on the way there uh they, they're all smoking pot and the fucking police are pulling up by them and uh, they think the police are gonna stop them and they start fucking eating it and uh they're like come on shelly eat some and he's like i'm not hungry and andy's like you're always hungry shelly eat come on <laughs> i thought that was funny i enjoyed that uh but then the cops just, of course, drive by them, and they're not even trying to stop them. <laughs> so I thought that was funny. But when they all get to Higgins Haven, and then uh, Shelly and Vera, they go out to the store. They're at the store. They get assaulted by some bikers, three bikers. Uh, these these actors are, are okay. They do are, they do decent with their biker characters. Not anything to write home about, really. But they're decent. They play assholes. I believe they were assholes. They did all right. <laughs> but, um... After that, uh, Shelly's like leaving, and he fucking uh, well, the, he accidentally runs over their bikes, and then the, like the main biker fucking knocks through his his windshield, and he tries to like he, he like fucking charges towards him with the with the car, and he jumps out of the way, and then they take off running. Of course, the bikers want to, well, the biker takes off running where she thinks Shelly's gonna run him over, so of course the bikers want revenge on him for fucking doing that to him, or at least to the leader. Uh, so they make it back to Higgins Haven. They're there. The bikers show up there. Their plan is to burn down the to burn the fucking barn down, I think. So they're getting gas, and this one dude keeps smoking a cigarette like twenty four seven. He keeps fucking smoking a cigarette every time. And the main biker like gets his cigarette and throws it away, and he's got another one behind his ear. He just takes it, puts it right back in. That's funny. I like that little character trait. But the female biker of the three, she goes into the barn. She's in there, and she's just like acting goofy for some reason. She's really playful. She makes it up to the top of the barn, and she's like swinging on this rope. Which was, which was, uh, I like this little creepy part here with the other biker, the cigarette biker. I just call him Cigarette Man. Cigarette Man walks up there and she's swinging on the rope. 
And all at once he looks up again and she's gone. The rope's just swinging and she ain't even on it no more. I thought that was creepy. I like that. He makes it in there. He climbs up to the top of the bar and she's fucking hung on the wall with a, a hay fork like straight through her neck, pinning her up against the wall, which was cool. Would be cool if it went for the fact that the end of the hay fork is like pointing directly towards the camera and another annoying fucking 3D shot. Then Jason shows up with another hay fork and stabs it, stabs cigarette man straight through the gut, which was entertaining kill. I like that. Uh, funny is he never lights his cigarette. <laughs> At least I didn't see him light it. So then the main biker, the one that's left, he goes into the barn looking for the other two. Uh, he finds a cigarette man's dead body, and then Jason jumps down. And he's like, oh, you bastard, you're a dead man. And they get into a, and then he goes in there with a machete trying to get Jason. Swings at Jason one time. Jason dodges and fucking like, falcon side punches him like that and knocks him straight down. That was funny <laughs> for me. So he knocks him straight down. And then you get kind of a weird-looking shot here where Jason's got the machete, and he's like hacking, but... The camera's like pulled back and he's like hacking like the side of his body, I guess, the side of his head, I think, and his body's like jerking up, but you can't really see it, so I'm like, okay. But uh, anyway, I guess he was clearly hacking him in the side of the head, but it's kind of a little confusing. For me, anyway. <laughs> Maybe I'm stupid, I don't know. But So that takes care of the three bikers. Uh, next, uh, Rick. Uh, well, you get a funny scene with Rick. Where I enjoyed this, where he's talking to uh, Chris, and he's kind of—he kind of seems on the edge, complaining because she ain't giving him none. She's kind of sexually uptight and doesn't want to give him any. But you find out why later. <laughs> but she doesn't want to give him any, and he's fucking talking like a, I gave up a weekend, a weekend with the Mary Jo Conrad to be here with you, and she's like the Mary Jo Conrad boy. Are you dumb? I thought that was funny. Uh, but Rick and Chris—they decide to leave, so they leave, and then uh. You got uh, Debbie as the character's name. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Debbie. She's the pregnant girl, and Rick, and she, they got done uh, fucking. They're taking a shower. She's taking a shower. He's going to get a beer. He's doing some hand stance. Um, he comes back. He's still walking on his hands, and there's a scene. Really cool. I love this death scene. I love it. And he's fucking standing there walking on his hands, and uh, Jason's fucking like right above him with a big machete. He fucking slams it right down on his chest like that and it like hits him so hard and the blood like shoots out towards the camera and he his body falls over dead. I love that. That was so cool. But then before I forget the iconic scene, Jason gets his hockey mask and he kills Vera, uh, his first kill with the hockey mask. Uh, of course Shelly gets killed off camera. The practical Joker dies off camera. Jason just calm, calmly strolls over there with his hockey mask and of course Vera thinks it's Shelly because he's the fucking practical joker and he's been pulling pranks to the whole movie which makes him a little annoying but more likably annoying because there's more to his character than Ted from the fucking second one. And he just jerks out a spear gun, shoots the fucking spear, it flies, this is one 3D effect that I really like in this movie where it like flies directly towards the, uh, her face directly towards the camera and fucking rams straight through her eyeball like straight out that way. She falls over dead in the water and Jason just casually throws the spear gun down and just takes off walking. I love that. I like that. That was cool. Jason has like a, a hump in his back in this movie, which is a pretty neat characteristic. I didn't mind that really. Uh, kind of reminds me of like fucking Quasimodo or something though, but <laughs> I, st I still didn't mind it. I prefer him without a hump in his back, but I, I think it's a neat little characteristic for this movie. So, uh, so she's dead. Uh, then Jason kills Andy, and then Debbie's like fucking. She gets on her uh, hammock she's laying on. She looks up in the air, and there's like blood dripping on a magazine she's reading, which is Fangoria of all magazines. That's cool. She looks up, and she looks up above her, and fucking Andy's body is like tw all twisted up and sitting up there in the rafters, I believe. And then Jason grabs her, like he stabs her from underneath the uh, fucking hammock. Which is, you know, the the Voorhees family likes to stab people from underneath their beds and hammocks, so. <laughs> Nothing new here, but it's still cool, and it's interesting that Jason kills a pregnant woman. Which, I wonder if that counts for a, uh, two pe two deaths, or is that a one? I, I'm not for sure. I guess it would be two. But, it's still cool. Still a cool, decent death. And then you got Rick and uh, Chris who are out in the woods, and she finally tells Rick why she's like so sexually uptight and what's happened to her to traumatize her this way and she tells him the story about when uh, her and Rick ride on a date she came back home and her mom was mad at her for being out so long and she slapped her in the face so she wanted to punish him by running out to the fucking woods big mistake in these, these movies once again the woods are creepy in these films and it's still creepy in this one I like it although they don't really play up the woods as much in this one as they did in the first and second one which kind of disappointed me but it's still still decent here so uh 
she was in the woods. She fell asleep under an oak tree. She got woke up by sounds of footsteps. She thought it was her dad came to get her. But the lo and behold, is fucking Jason. I assume this takes place before the beginning of the second film, or at least before, or at least after Alice died and before, uh, before Jason went to kill uh, Jenny and Paul and all them other counselors. But uh, but what's weird is he's wearing the same fucking clothes from this movie when he shouldn't be wearing these clothes. So that's a, that seems like a little laziness right there. Like they just said, fuck it, just let him wear the same clothes. We're too sorry to get a similar outfit to the one he had in part two, but. Anyway, I mean, I'm fine with all the different films and the directors and them having different ideas for the look of Jason, doing different makeup effects for him. But when they just get lazy, when the obvious flashback scene should be him wearing similar clothes, that's just that's just fucking lazy. But anyway, and so Jason's like attacking her. He's like trying to drag her off. And then she passes out, and then she says that she woke up in her own bed, and her parents never uh, never spoke a word about it since. So that's kind of interesting. I like that. So it's kind of creepy, just the idea of being attacked by some weird-looking guy in the middle of the fucking woods and then blacking out and never knowing what happened. That's creepy. That's cool. I enjoy that. Uh, it's kind of like the Jason Raper, but <laughs> it doesn't seem like something Jason would do. But at this point, they're just experimenting with this character, and they don't have him really, like, I don't have him completely fleshed out yet, and they're adding stuff to him, and they're trying to see what sticks. But, uh, I mean, Jason's killed. I mean, Jason has attacked hotter women than, than Chris, so... <laughs> Why wouldn't he rape them? I mean, if you're going to rape somebody, you're not just going to stop raping after this. So, whatever on that. That doesn't, I don't, I mean, I'm fine with the scene. It's great, but I just don't buy the idea of Jason raping somebody or something like that. But I think it's more of the case that she thinks she might have been raped. Which is weird to think about, like, what Jason do? Undress her, rape her, and then put her clothes back on? I'm just, okay. Can't really picture Jason doing that at all. It's more than likely that Jason was going to kill her. Uh, he just was curious about her and he was going to kill her. This was like his early days and he was not perfected killing yet so he was going to kill her and then Jason probably got scared off or something like that by her dad coming out there and didn't want to risk it in a confrontation with two people or whatever and fucking, well not scared but didn't want to get, didn't want to risk getting into a, didn't want to risk getting into a confrontation with two people and just got the fuck out of there because Jason seems to usually attack people one at a time. Uh, even though he could easily kill two to three at once. <laughs> but uh, that's more than likely probably what happened. But we'll never know. Because it's left up to your imagination. So that's kind of what makes it creepier. And I actually like that better than them, than them just spelling it. Fucking, I had to spit it out here. Than them just spelling it out. I'm, it's always cooler when something's left up to your imagination. Than when somebody just spells it out completely like that. Uh, but uh, So that was cool. And then back at the Higgins Haven, fucking uh, Chong is out smoking some weed in the outhouse. And then the fucking outhouse starts shaking where Jason's shaking it. And he looks at his weed and he's like, heavy shit. <laughs> I thought that was funny. I like that. That was pretty fucking funny. Um, but uh, after he gets out of there, he thinks it's Shelly, of course. He heads over to the barn. Uh, you got his woman, Chili. Chuck and the power ends up going out. Chuck goes down to check the fuse box. Got the breaker box. He's down there. Uh, fucking Jason shows up behind him, grabs him, slams him, all, slams him into it, and he fucking gets electrocuted. Decent scene, I enjoyed that. And then uh, you got the last one left, which is Chuck's girlfriend Chili. She gets stabbed through the gut with a fucking red hot poker, which was cool. Uh, so she's dead. And then the only ones, the only two you got left is Rick and Chris. They managed to make it back to the camp. They're there at the camp. They're wondering what the fuck's going on. Rick disappears. Chris goes out there. She's hollering for him. Then you get a scene here. I think it's the first. It's the first skull crush in this franchise where Jason's got his hands on his head, fucking crushes his skull. Then you get a weird cheesy 3D effect here with the eyeball fucking like flies out directly towards the camera like that, where it's like on a string. And that's a little cheesy, a little dated effect there, 3D wise. That kind of hurt it a little bit for me, but I still, I still enjoyed the cheesiness of it on a cheese level and 3D. Of it was uh, just an idea of like a, an eyeball flying towards the screen, 3D like that is just fun for me. So Rick's dead, and so he kind of just got done off with, and then he gets thrown through the window. Jason has to break a window. In every one of these movies, the killer has to break a window. So he's dead. He gets thrown through the window. Chris sees him. Chris takes off. Uh, Jason's coming down with an axe. She has to pull a fucking knife out of the back of Debbie's like uh, out of Debbie's back, which was pretty, which is pretty cool. It's like what she has to do to survive. So she pulls it out of her back, and she's fucking stabbing at Jason. Stab Jason in the leg. Jason falls down. Uh, she takes off. Jason gr uh, grunts in this one. Like, when he gets stabbed, he's like, <laughs> Which is funny. 
I don't mind him grunting like that. I mean, him not talking, him not talking. Period is fine too. But him grunting and groaning like that is is fine too. I'm not really a, I don't really get too picky when it comes to those two things. So he gets stabbed in the leg. He swings a knife at her. She manages to get away in time. She makes it out of a window. She falls down. Uh, she hides and fucking hits Jason in the back of the head with a stick of wood, and <laughs> knocks him down, which was pretty funny and entertaining. Now, there was one scene where she threw some books on top of Jason. It was just funny looking at Jason going, oh, books. He's like, oh, like that. I see Jason as a powerhouse, really, and I don't really see him getting affected by little books, regardless of this is the humanistic Jason. I still don't see, like, little books slowing him down, really, like that. But that's just me. Once again, another nitpick. But, uh, <laughs> they fucking, uh, she gets in the van, and she's trying to drive away, and she gets stuck on the bridge. Well, before that, you get a stupid scene where Jason's, like, standing on the road, and she's driving towards Jason. He fucking just leaps out of the road, like, completely just leaps all the way, like, leaps straight directly to the side of the road. And I'm like, why didn't he just move? I thought that was a little bit over top, over the top, and just seemed weird seeing Jason fucking leap out of the way like that, but whatever. She gets stuck on the bridge because the, the van's out of gas. Jason... Still chasing after her. She makes it out of the van. Uh, Jason gets his hands caught in the, the window. He fucking rams his face directly towards the windshield like that with the mask on. Or the window, I mean. Uh, so he gets free. He breaks himself loose with his mask. He takes off after her. They make it into a barn. She's hiding. Then you get a cool, uh, more emotion scene here for Jason where he's like looking for her and he can't find her. And he's like throwing shit everywhere. Like, he's like, who the fuck are you? We might as well be saying that. It's pretty funny seeing Jason show a little bit of emotion like that. I like that. Uh, so she's hiding, she manages to, she fucking, uh, falls down on top of Jason, she's like hanging on to the top of the barn, and she falls directly down on top of Jason, knocks Jason down, she ends up, uh, knocking him out with a shovel, uh, and then she puts a fucking noose around his neck and drops him out the top of the barn, and Jason gets hung in a really cool scene, I enjoyed that, I like the idea of Jason being hung like that, that's cool, uh, you think Jason is, uh, well, she thinks Jason is dead, I don't think anybody in the audience ever fucking thought Jason was dead, <laughs> but, uh, and then she uh, opens up the barn, and I guess she's ready to hit the road, thinking Jason's dead. And Jason, like, fucking looks at her, because he's still alive, and he lifts up his mask, and he's, like, smiling at her, like, Hey. And I thought that was funny. He's like, remember me? <laughs> he obviously remembers her. Uh, and then he just let, jumps down, picks up his machete. He's about to kill her. Then DX Machina, a uh, biker character, shows back up, miraculously coming back to life. I'm like, how the fuck did this happen? He was clearly dead, so how the fuck did he come back to life? So that was kind of weird, kind of stupid, how this character just comes back from the dead. And Jason turns around, slices off his hand, and then he falls on the ground. And Jason fucking kills him again by hacking him in the head, I guess, again. Jason might want to chop his whole head off, or he might come back from the dead again. But then you get a cool scene where Chris picks up an axe, and uh, by, uh, Jason turns back around. He, she fucking hacks him directly in the head with the axe. This axe mark directly right there on his forehead is going to be in uh, every film to come, basically. <laughs> but he gets hacked in the head. Then Jason drops his machete, sticks his arms out like directly towards the screen, fucking starts coming, like reaching for it like Frankenstein or something similar to that. And then he fucking just falls down on the ground like he can't take no more. So he gets took out, and then she makes it out there. Uh, she she leaves, walks outside, gets into a canoe like the girl from like Alice from the first film. Once again, why the fuck is she getting into a canoe? Is she just so stressed out, I guess? She just wants to get into a canoe and just get away from everything, I guess. Once again, I guess I can buy that, but whatever. She gets into the canoe, makes it out in the water. Uh, Q, it's morning. She's obviously dreaming now. We've got to end this Friday the 13th movie with a dream sequence. It's a tradition. All first and second both had dream sequence endings. we got to fucking do it again here. Uh, so she has a nightmare. I'm fine with this, but her nightmare makes no fucking sense. Instead of Jason coming up out of the water and attacking her, it's fucking Mrs. Voorhees. Now, Mrs. Voorhees jumps up out of the water with a head, jumps up out of the water, and grabs her and pulls her under the water just like little Jason from the first movie. Uh, this is stupid. It makes no fucking sense. I'm fine with Mrs. Voorhees coming up out of the water, but it makes no sense character-wise. Chris had no idea who the fuck Mrs. Voorhees was. She never had, she didn't even know that the fucking killer was Jason. So, <laughs> she had no idea who Mrs. Voorhees was, so why would she dream about Mrs. Voorhees when she doesn't even fucking know who Mrs. Voorhees is? So that was fucking stupid. I don't know why that was in there. Uh, but after that, that's pretty much end of movie. The police show up. They're hauling her off in the squad car, and she's, like, hysterical and laughing. But, uh, so you get the idea that she's a little bit even more crazy after this than she was before. So, and then that's, uh, Q. They, well, they focus in on Jason's body laying there, which is neat and creepy. You think maybe he might move, but he doesn't. And then that's Q in the movie, and you get the, uh, Harry Manfredini score, which is a lot of fun. And reminds me of, like, a fucking disco Friday 13th theme. 
which I think is really cool and fun. This film, uh, I already know it's not as good as Part 4. It's better than Part 5 by mile. I hate Part 5. Part 5 can suck a huge dick. But uh, this film is still good. Two and a half stars. It's still a decent movie. It's a decent movie. The kills in it I enjoy, but the ending is just fucking stupid. The biker coming back to life is fucking stupid. Uh, Jason wearing the same outfit he wore, he wore, he wears in this film in a flashback of a scene that takes place way earlier is fucking lazy, but, uh, I like Jason in this film, uh, I don't mind Chris as the lead, she's my least favorite of the first three, though, but she's still decent, um, uh, but, like I said, the film has a lot of weak points, like with the 3D shots and everything, too, the annoying three old school 3D shots of the stab something towards the camera like this. That gets fucking annoying, but the film is still pretty good, and it's, you should definitely see it if you watch the first two. There's nothing really horribly wrong with the film. It's just the weakest of the first three. So I'll see you guys again with Friday the 13th, the final chapter, which we know is fucking bullshit title, but I'll see you guys again with the final chapter.